The drive through Stalker A few years ago, when I was in my mid-twenties, I was working at my job as a manager in a fast food restaurant. It was a slow afternoon, and we only had one order. I went over and handed him his tray. The man stuck out his hand and said, <laughs> How much does a polar bear weigh? <sighs> I've heard this line before and internally groaned. Enough to break the ice. Hi, I'm Josh. You must be... My name, he said, looking at my name tag. Yes, hi Josh. I have to get back to work now. I smiled and turned away. Wait, the man said loudly. I turned back towards him, trying to keep my best smile in place. I'd had enough creepers in my day to know when I saw him. He had too much confidence and he wasn't even that attractive looking. Still, he was really going to go ahead with this, wasn't he? And while I was at work and had to be nice too. <laughs> Would you go on a date with me? My mind started reeling with possibilities to reject him. I have a boyfriend. I'm a lesbian. I just don't want to date some strange guy I never saw before in my life, or... I said, not right now, okay? I ended up stumbling out, still trying to be polite, and get him away from me. He wouldn't take no for an answer. I kept saying it, and eventually a car pulled up in the drive-thru. I really have to go now. Bye, I said, turning away and just leaving him standing there, trying to call me back. One of my employees asked if I knew him. Nope, never seen him before. I hope he never comes back. If only that hope could come true. Shortly after the incident, I started working nights. During the nighttime, only the drive through was open, so no guests inside. It was kind of nice working those shifts, if it wasn't for Josh. For the next few weeks, this man kept coming through my drive through bringing me things. Like a rose, a box of chocolates, I kept turning down his advances the best way I could. I'm not... I'm not all that forceful of a person, but there's only so many ways you can say no. He also kept calling the store at all shifts to see if I was there. He would not leave me alone. And I'm not lying about me rejecting him constantly. I kept telling him I didn't want to date him. He still kept coming back. I can't tell you how much he just creeped me out either. One night when I was driving home from work, I swore I saw his car behind me. I freaked out. I drove all over town until I lost his car. I wasn't sure it was him, but I did not want him finding out where I lived. I could only imagine him standing by my window, which is at ground level, and watching me sleep or even more perverse creepy things. I had to put an end to this. Josh came through my drive through again. I had finally had enough. Josh, I will never, ever date you. Ne never. Please leave me alone. Do not make mistake this for me being coy or something. I do not like you. Leave me alone. The hurt on his face was apparent. Really? He said. I threw my hands up in the air and walked away. It was getting to the point where I wanted to call the cops on him. Although it was doubtful they'd do anything since he wasn't violent or anything against me. Josh pulled away. Sometime later that night, I heard him pull up at the drive through speaker again. My name? I need to tell you something. He pulled up to the window. I refused to go near it, and one of my male employees spoke with him. The male employee gave me a letter when Josh pulled away. I opened up the letter and it was a card. Inside was written, Thank you for rejecting me. I will never trust another woman again. How dare you hurt me this way? It went, it went on and on for a while like that. I couldn't help but laugh at how pathetic it all sounded. Josh never came back to my drive through again. McDonald's Bathroom so this is my first post on the sub. A friend finally convinced me to share this little story, since she's always been teasing me with it. I'm a 23-year-old male in Florida, fairly introverted, hardly ever get out of the house. This encounter happened a few months ago, 
It was about 12 a.m., and I was getting a bit stir crazy and just needed to get out and just chill with someone. So I texted a special lady friend of mine. We made plans to do our normal routine of hanging out at this nice secluded park. I went and picked her up and drove to our spot and spent a couple hours just chatting about anything and everything. Then she got hungry, so we decided to hop in the car and drive down the road for a bit to McDonald's. Hooray for 24-7 fast food. This, this is where things started to get weird. We arrived at the McDonald's and went inside instead of the drive through She ordered her food while I went to the restroom to wash my hands. I'm a bit of a neat freak. I really wish I hadn't gone to the restroom that night. As soon as I walked into the restroom, I saw this guy standing at one of those heater dryer things. Alright, not too weird. But then I noticed that he was kind of hunched over at it and wasn't moving. Whatever, I, I ignored him. I washed my hands and realized that he's standing at the only dryer in the place. The damn paper towels were also empty, so I awkwardly tried to ask the guy if he was done using the dryer. He didn't respond. Thoroughly creeped out, I just walked out and dry my hands on my shirt. I get out of the restroom and find my friend, and we sit down at a table to eat. Maybe 20 minutes go by, and we're headed back out to the car to go back to our spot. Well, my friend has to use the restroom, so I figured I might as well also. I mean, surely that guy has got to be gone by now, right? Wrong. That guy is still standing at the dryer, mumbling something to himself now. I go into a stall and take a leak, and can hear him hitting the button of the dryer over and over again. I wash my hands again and don't even attempt to get to the dryer. But then the guy moves as I'm trying to walk past him. He steps back right in my path and just looks at me. I notice he's around my age. He just he just stares at me and says, Excuse me. Uh, okay. I put my head down, quickly say, pardon me, and rush around him to get out of the bathroom. 30 seconds later, as I'm waiting for my friend to get out of the ladies' restroom, the guy walks out. He just sits down at a table near me and is just is just staring straight at me. My friend walks out and notices the creep just eyeballing me. She jokingly asks, make a new friend in there? I just shake my head at her and try to lead her out of the car without, without making obvious I wanted to run from this guy. Then he does the weirdest thing. He just starts cackling. Like a madman, I mean, straight up joker laugh. I'm thinking to myself, oh shit, crazy druggy dude is gonna do something bad. Then he just suddenly stops, looks down at my feet and says, Nice shoes, Osiris. Osiris is a brand of shoe. I manage to mutter, uh, thanks, and quickly walk away out to the car. As my friend and I are getting into the car, we notice the guy staring at me from inside McDonald's, just straight eyeballing me, death stare. Then he just stands up and starts booking it towards us. He wasn't running, but he was like speed walking. He burst through both doors of McDonald's and starts coming right at us. And now he looks angry. I pulled out of the parking so fast, it's a damn good thing the roads were empty. My friend and I went back to our spot and hung out some more. Every car that we saw in the distance, I kept freaking out expecting it to be the weird guy following us. My friend just teased me about it the entire night, and still teases me about it to this day about how I made friends with a creeper in the bathroom who liked my shoes. Shooting up in the bathroom. Sorry this story is so long, this all happened when I was about 16, in high school, and working my first part time job at a fast food restaurant, located right off the highway, and it wasn't uncommon to get a lot of crazy customers. I arrived at work one day, and was surprised to see my schedule for the week had changed, giving me a graveyard shift on a Friday night. The thoughts of being at this place overnight gave me the creeps 
and thought my manager was insane for making the youngest employee take a night shift. But it wasn't a school night, and I didn't want to seem like a baby, so I accepted the shift. When the night came, it was just me and another coworker who was a larger man and very friendly, so I felt more safe with him there. Before leaving, my manager gave me the rundown on how the night was supposed to go. At 11 p.m., I was supposed to lock the doors and we would only be taking drive through orders. But on this particular night, just my luck, one of the main doors had been broken and wouldn't lock properly. If anyone comes in, just tell them they can't be in the lobby and to order through the drive through After these words of wisdom, my manager went home to the comfort of his bed, and I started my long shift. Being slightly paranoid and not used to the new shift, every noise I heard from outside made me jump. A few times some customers came in through the unlocked door, but quickly and politely left after I asked them to use the drive through When it reached about 1am in the morning, I was in the back of the store organizing boxes when I heard the slam of the heavy door close. I ran to the front to tell whomever it was to get out, but saw no one. I walked into the lobby and looked around but didn't see anyone there. Did you hear anyone come in? I asked my coworker as he came to investigate as well. Maybe they left, but I'll check the bathroom to be safe, he said as he opened the men's bathroom and then quickly came back out. Nope, no one here. You should check the girl's bathroom, he advised. I agreed and opened the door to the woman's bathroom. At first I didn't see anything so I called out, anyone in here? No response. To double check, I took a few steps into the bathroom and at this time, I was able to see some feet behind a stall. The stall door was wide open and as I got closer, I was able to see inside. My stomach instantly sick. I caught eyes with a woman with long tangled brown hair crouched next to the toilet with a needle in her arm. She jumped out at a surprise and ripped the needle out of her arm, squirting blood all over the floor. She raised the needle over her head and started to move towards me. I screamed and ran as fast as I could out of the bathroom and past my coworker. I whipped around just in time to see her run out the door. My heart was racing and I was scared to death and ended up going home right after that. I quit the next day. So ladies shooting up in the bathroom at one in the morning, let's not meet again.